Ballroom Blitz. And nobody knew what to do with Ballroom Blitz. The band said, well, what are we going to do with this, Phil? And I was planning, I was planning another drum record because I was, I had already had two. I had Hear Me A Drummer Man, and then I had Going, Going, Gone, which was on Fontana, which Jack Baverstock put out. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a drum record together. I'm gonna do something really, really, you know, mad. I'm gonna do something mad. And then they played me Ballroom Blitz, and the boys are going, well, we don't know what to do with it. What do you think, Phil? And I was thinking to myself, do I throw my drum ideas into Ballroom Blitz? And I thought, you know what, this, this is, if we're gonna do it, this is the time to do it, because that song and my ideas takes the band to another level. And I said to, uh, to Mick Tuck, I said, um, Sandy Nelson. And he went, yes, it's great. I said, OK, this is what we're going to do. It's going to be, it's going to be my Sandy Nelson record, but we're going to call it Ballroom Blitz. And he said, well, what do you mean? So I got behind the kit. And I play, and he went, oh, great. And then when the, when the band were rehearsing, I was actually playing drums. Mm. And we rehearsed it, and Mick said, come on, let me have a go. I said, fine. And that's it. And, that, yeah. and it was absolutely, abso do you know what? We rehearsed that on a, I think it was a Thursday and Friday. And we weren't booked in the studio until the Monday. And I, we were, I was talking to the boys and the rehearsal went so well that they actually couldn't wait for the Monday. Mm. Can we go tomorrow? Can we go, can we go and do it now? It was kind of like, you know. And when we got there on the Monday, they drove that session. You can actually hear the magic they were playing magic because they couldn't wait to play it. And, and that's, and you can hear. And you still made that song in a day, Boring Blitz? Yeah. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Why? Yeah. We rattled it off. Yeah. It, it, in fact, I think we made it in less than a day mm -hmm. because the track went down. We only did about two or three takes because it was there. There might have been a little bum note from a, from a bass and I said, we'll patch it because I'm not playing around with this. This is actually, I can hear this thing jumping off every well, player. It was the energy of the record, wasn't Thank it? Thank you. That's exactly it. Yeah. It's the energy. And, and if you capture it and the boys aren't tired, you can hear it, it's, it's, you know, they've got something to say. Mm -hmm. And then the voices went on, the overdubs went on, you know, then the lead voice went on and I mixed it. And when I pulled the faders down, when I was mixing it, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. Mm. And my joke in those days was, Kijing. And, and it's been used a million times since then, because that was my little joke to the boys. I said, I actually think that's a number one in America. I do think that's a number one in America. Absolutely, I, you know, Those it's still hairs set, on the, back, the hairs on the back of your neck. They're not wrong, are they? No. No. No, it was kind of like, oh, where did that come from? Yeah. It's staggering. 